welcome to Tactola Access. I'm Megan Campbell. And I'm Jennifer Valentinos. On today's show, we'll be recapping games from each and every one of our Hokie sports teams. Virginia Tech quarterback threw three touchdown passes, and defensive end Dottie Nicholas recorded six tackles and they sacked to headline the football team's second spring scrimmage held Saturday morning. The 72 play scrimmage featured a combination of red zone situations and fuel field play. Four of the Hokies' five touchdowns in the scrimmage came in red zone situations. Tech's lone touchdown in a non-red zone situation was a byproduct of one of the Hokies' best drives of the spring. Facing the first team defense, the first team offense went 65 yards in sixth place and scored on a 35-yard pass from quarterback Logan Thomas to Dimitri Knowles. Thomas completed just six of 16 passes for 119 yards, but he did not throw an interception and was victimized by some dropped passes. On the ground, Michael Holmes led all rushers with 23 yards and scored on a four-yard touchdown run. Thomas added the Hokies' other score on the ground with a three-yard run on third and goal late in the scrimmage. Defensively, Tech recorded just two sacks, but the defense intercepted two passes and had 11 tackles for a loss. Nicholas led all defenders with his six tackles, while Luther Maddy made five tackles. Freshman cornerback Brandon Faison and back, backup safety TJ Shaw grabbed the interceptions. The Hokies conclude spring practice next Saturday with the annual Maroon White Spring Game. Hi, Terry Adams. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Okay. Are you ready? Hi, I'm Rachel Franks from VTTV here with running back Trey Edmonds. Trey, we heard you had a big breakout run during the scrimmage. Um, what led to that and um, how can we see that maybe, are we going to see that in the future in the season to come? Uh, hopefully. Um, it, 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 it was most definitely led by my offensive line. I mean, they had some outrageous blocks and all I did was run behind it and I was able to score and break a long one. So I'm happy and I'm excited and hopefully I do have some more in my tank for the rest of the season and the future coming, so. Okay, what would you say has been your favorite part of practice so far this spring? I'm just getting at it every day, just going hard with the defense, every play, not taking none off just learning. That's definitely been a, a big set this spring and just being able to go out there and contribute to this offense. So, What do you think you've improved the most at? I would say uh, ball handling for one and another is just my footwork. Uh, it's not the best right now. <laughs> it, it's still a work in progress, but I say I'm improving every day and I think I'm getting closer and closer to it getting really good and Hopefully, I can keep on cleaning it up, and by the, uh, by the fall season, I hope that you can get better and better and better. So would you say that's what you're going to focus on before Alabama this summer? Oh, definitely, definitely. Alabama is a top-notch team, so you don't want to go in there and have fumbles or ball security issues or mess up your landmarks doing running plays. So definitely want to go in there, hold the ball high and tight, and just go and finish plays. So that's definitely that's definitely what I'm going to work on this uh, offseason. Okay, so the game this Spring game on Sunday is going to be a lot bigger than the other open scrimmages so Definitely. far. How is that going to change the way you play? Are you going to be more pumped up or maybe more nervous? Uh, I don't think it's going to change the way we play. I'm definitely going to be more pumped up just because it's a bigger crowd and the band's going to be playing and my family's going to be here. But I don't think it's going to change the way we play at all. Um, I'm still going to come out here. I'm going to do what I've been doing the last three weeks and hopefully it could be po it could all be positive. So I'm, I'm eager for the spring game and hopefully it turns out to be great. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, ready? Hi, I'm Rachel Franks from VTTV here with Kyle Fuller. So Kyle, what has been your favorite part of spring practice so far? Uh, definitely the intensity. Um, you know, I like the new tea time that we do before practice, you know, setting the tone. And, um, you know, I think that would be the big one. Okay. What do you think you've improved on most during the spring? Um, you know, just trying to be... Uh, Just trying to get better every day, uh, you know, with my techniques and things like that. Um, if I mess up on something that I don't like the next day, just correcting it the next day and just keep on continue to get better. Okay. And what do you think you have the most to work on before Alabama? Um, you know, just in my overall game, uh, you know, learning offenses and, um, you know, taking it out to the field and, uh, you know, just applying it. So you're more of a quiet guy. Um, in the past week, XM has been doing some trash talk on Twitter and stuff. How do you, 
do you trash talk very much or are you more of a watch me how I play and sort of Yeah, no, nah, I just I let uh I let Anton take uh take that and I just laugh at it. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. A little, bit, a little bit of things. So. You gonna try and play Saturday? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna try to play. You know, <laughs> you never know what a drilling can do for me, and um, get it spatted up real nice and taped up real nice. So hopefully, I better go. We talked so much about them wanting to have like a defined order from the running backs. Do you feel like that's happened this spring? And, and what is that order? <laughs> um, it's been kind of up and down. All of, all of us pretty much had our days, so um, it's kind of hard to read right now. And um, and I think they're they're looking at it like that too. So. I mean, it's been a lot of evaluation going on that, that I missed too. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if that put me behind a little bit too. So, hopefully, it didn't. But it might have. That it sounds like a lot like last year, though. Yeah. That sounds like exactly like the approach yeah. last year. Do you think when the season starts, it will be different, or do you think it's going to be a similar look to last year? It probably will be. Um, I know right now that they're looking at us three backs, um, me, Trey, and, and Mike, right now, and we're getting a real good look. And um, we probably get another look from from the other running back come come fall too. So. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to predict. So. Is, is it not? Uh, do you have any questions? The opportunities you have, the more you find out about kids, and you know, some kids will really make huge leaps and gains over the summer, particularly with offensive linemen, young kids, how much they develop, especially with the new system going in. Even with the older guys, I think that applies more this year than it does in some other cases. Um, as I was telling him earlier, I think I'm a little bit closer to understanding you know, who our top seven or eight are, but not ready to say that, not ready to, to identify anybody at any position yet. Have you seen enough to, to kind of settle some guys into position where you think they might play next year, or is that still a fluid situation? Um, I would say yes with some, but there's still a lot of flexibility with other guys. And sometimes when you have guys that are, that are versatile players, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Flexibility. So whether one particular guy plays guard or tackle might not be as based as much on on his performance as how someone else comes on. So you got a young guy that really comes on, and you think he can be a tackle, and then you've got another guy that's a guard or tackle, then it might push him more towards playing guard. But still a lot of flexibility there. I know we kind of talk about the same. You go because I, I know he'll probably be back there for a little bit. Um, I'm going to be in Lynchburg for a little bit. Okay, and then uh. I probably, yeah, I'm going to be here and then let's break for a little bit, then I go back to the Bahamas okay. for about three weeks or so. So you know, hoping to get a little opportunity to really work with Logan on the side some during the summer. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, yeah. Mitri, what would you say your favorite part of spring practice has been? My favorite part of spring practice? Ah, one-on-ones, I would one say, on yes, okay. yes. And what do you think you've improved on the most? My route running. Route running? Yes. Okay, and what do you... <laughs> Think you still have to work on before Alabama? Before Alabama, the big game, huh? I think that I need to work on uh, being more consistent. Once I, once I'm consistent with my uh, my all-around game, we should be pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna beat them. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and um, on Sunday, this is gonna be a lot bigger than sort of the open scrimmages you guys have had, or sorry, Saturday. Yeah. Than the open scrimmages you guys have had. How does that change the game? Does it pump you up more, or does it make you more nervous? Uh, me personally, I love the the feed from the crowd, the energy. To me, I call it I call it showtime. So okay. anytime anytime I see a a uh, nice crowd out there. It's showtime, so okay, here we so go. We can expect big things. Showtime. <laughs> Thank you. All right. The baseball team took on number one North Carolina at home on Friday night, and it wasn't able to stop the Tar Heels on offense as they lost 21 to 8. UNC got off to a fast start, scoring six runs in the top of the first inning. The Hokies were not ready to give up, though, as they scored four runs of their own in the bottom of the first. Tech kept it close until the fourth inning when the Tar Heels scored a whopping eight runs. In the next three innings, UNC got six more runs while Tech only got one. In the bottom of the eighth, Tech's Gary Schneider hit a two-run home run, but by then the game was already out of hand for the Hokies. The Tar Heels scored 21 runs on 21 hits, while the Hokies scored eight runs on 15 hits. Even though Tech lost, they scored their eight runs on UNC pitcher Kent Emanuel, who had only allowed 10 runs in his first eight starts. Brad Markey took the loss on the mound for the Hokies and moved to a 3-3 on the season. The teams played again on Saturday for the second game in a three-game series. 
In that game, Andrew Rash had a pair of home runs, but North Carolina was able to play a single run in the 10th inning and escape with a 9-8 victory on Saturday afternoon. Rash hit a two-home run that tied the game at two in the bottom of the first inning, and after the Tar Heels took a 6-3 lead in the top of the fourth, he smacked a three-run home run to tie the game at six in the bottom of the frame. UNC played a two in the top of the eighth inning on a two-run home run to take an 8-6 lead. Tech answered back in the bottom of the eighth as Brendan Hayden and Chad Morgan both singled to load the bases. Alex Perez drew a walk to bring one home and Gary Shiner looped a single into left field to bring in the tying run. However, UNC held the Hokies scoreless over the next two frames to send the game to extra innings. In the tenth, the Tar Heels capitalized on a wild pitch to push a winning run across the plate. Joe Mattaply caught the start for the Hokies and went four innings and struck out six batters but allowed five earned runs. The teams concluded the three-game series on Sunday. VTTV's Rachel Franks was on the scene for the baseball team's final game against the Tar Heels on Sunday. Hi, I'm Rachel Franks here for VTTV at English Field, where the Hokie baseball team took on number one ranked North Carolina. Unfortunately, they lost three to nothing. They were unable to score despite getting three hits on the night. North Carolina got one run in the sixth inning and then two in the seventh inning. The Hokies were able to shut them out the rest of the night but could not get any runs themselves. Devin Burke took the loss after pitching for four innings. This is Rachel Franks reporting from VTTV. TV. team fell to Tennessee 5-3 in the 2013 Hokie Smoky Classic at Pioneer Park on Tuesday night. Tennessee scored four runs in the first two innings with three coming in the first inning alone. Tech responded with its own three-run frame in its third as Kyle Wernicke scored on an RBI single by Gary Schneider and Sean Koleska followed with his fourth home run of the season. The Volunteers added another run in the sixth but the Hokies answered back with Alex Perez scoring on a grounder by Schneider. Jake Joyce closed the game for Tech, tossing two scoreless frames and striking out a career-high six batter to keep the Volunteers off the board. However, Tennessee was equally affected on the mounds and held Tech's offense scoreless the rest of the way to hold on to the win. The Hokies will stay on the road for the weekend, traveling up to College Park for a three-game series with Maryland. 
The softball team split a pair of games at James Madison Wednesday evening, beating the Dukes 5-2 before falling 2-1 in the next game. Junior Danny Anderson had four hits to lead the way for the Hokies. In the opener, JMU took a 1-0 lead in the fourth inning, but Tech scored five unearned runs in a big fifth inning to take control of the game for good. Kelly Hines was in control for the Hokies, allowing two runs on seven hits with 11 strikeouts in the complete game effort. At the plate, Anderson led the way with three hits, while Kylie McGoldrick had two hits. In the second game, JMU grabbed a 1-0 lead in the first inning after Tech committed two errors on ground balls. That's the way it stood until the sixth inning when Logan Spall hit a flare to right field to score for Tech. However, in the bottom of the seventh, JMU scored a run on a Tech throwing error to end the game and win 2-1. to one. Jasmine Harrell went six innings, allowing two unearned runs on, the, on four hits with five strikeouts. The team stayed on the road for a series against Boston College. The softball team took a pair of games from Boston College Saturday afternoon at Shea Field. Hokies won the opener 4-1 before holding on for a 5-4 win in the second game. In the opener, Courtney Little crushed a three-run home run in the first inning, and Danny Anderson followed suit later in the inning. Although those would be the only runs Tech scored, they were more than enough for pitcher Kelly Hines. Hines allowed just one run on three hits with four walks and ten strikeouts. In the second game, Tech struck first with a pair of runs in the third inning, one eye double from Kylie McGoldrick and one in a sacrifice fly from Little. BC tied it up in the, in the bottom of the third before Tech took the lead back in the fourth inning on a two-run home run from Amanda Ake. The Eagles countered with a solo home run in the fourth, but when Goldrick's leadoff home run in the fifth proved to be the difference. Pitcher Jasmine Harrell gave up four runs on seven hits, walked five, and struck out two in the win. The two teams wrapped up the three-game series on Sunday. In their third game of the weekend, the Hokies swept Boston College with an 11-3 victory. Danny Anderson built up the Hokies' momentum with four hits, driving in a run in the first inning and hitting a solo home run in the third inning. In the fourth, Lauren Gaskill hit a sacrifice fly to left field to drive in a run, while Courtney Little, Kylie McGoldrick, and Anderson all hit singles to drive runners in. Tech ended up scoring four runs in the fourth inning and five more in the fifth to put the game out of reach. Anderson had four hits and three RBI, while Little, McGoldrick, Banks, and Bailey Little each had two hits. Jasmine Harrell went four innings, allowing three runs on two hits with two walks and two strikeouts. Kelly Hines closed out the game, giving up two hits, getting two strikeouts. Tech improves to 27-10 overall and 6-5 in the ACC with the series sweep. The team will return home on Saturday for a doubleheader against the Florida State Semin what are they? Seminoles. 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 <laughs> The team will return home on Saturday for a doubleheader against the Florida State. The lacrosse team beat the Longwood Lancers 14-8 at Thompson Field last Wednesday night. Sophomore Megan Will led the Hokies with six goals and set a new personal record of eight points. Both teams got off to a slow start as the first goal came seven minutes in by the Hokies. Brooke Martin got a goal off the right side to get Tech's offense going. Tech started off the game with multiple shots. However, after four shots from the Hokies, Longwood tied the game as Sarah Jacobson shot one up the middle at the 16-minute mark. The two teams traded goals with 10 minutes remaining in the first, but Tech continued the momentum and went on a 3-0 run to end the first half. The Hokies went into halftime with a 7-2 lead. In the second half, Tech continued right where they left off as Will notched her first fourth goal off the game 30 seconds into Longwood tried to get things going with back-to-back -back goals to make it an 8-4 game, but Will continued to dominate as she notched her fifth goal of the game 40 seconds later. Longwood made it a 9-6 game after two goals and a 30-second span to force the Hokies to take their first time out of the game at the 18-minute mark. After regrouping, the Hokies took three shots before Martin recorded her third goal of the game, but Longwood responded shortly after to keep the three-goal margin. Two minutes later, Will sparked a fourth goal Hokie run with her sixth goal of the game to tie her career high. The final three Tech goals of the game were enough to give the Hokies a commanding 14-7 lead. Longwood's final goal came with less than two minutes left, but it was not enough to catch the Hokies and the game ended 14-8. Tech finished the day with a 31-12 shots edge and a 21-15 advantage on ground balls. The Hokies will return to action on Saturday for a home game against Maryland. 
The men's tennis team fell to 25th ranked Clemson 4-3 on Sunday afternoon. Sunday's match marked the final home game for the Hokies this season as they honored their seniors prior to the match. The Tigers claimed the doubles point early, winning all three matches against the Hokies. Clemson went up 2-0 with a singles win early on as Zachary Rigsby picked up the 6-4, 6-2 win, but the Hokies answered, winning the next two matches. Joao Montier claimed a win with a score of 6-1, 6-4 to cut in the Tigers' lead 2-1. Tech nodded it at two with another win as Amerigo Contini won in straight sets with scores of 6-2, 7-5. However, Clemson secured the team win by taking the next two singles matches. The Hokies will wrap up the regular season next weekend on the road traveling to Miami and Florida State. That's all we have for you on this edition of Tech Total Access. Please join us next week for more hard-hitting sports action. As always, Go Hokies!